Hello friends. Welcome to this section of this time series tutorial. Today we are going to discuss about the Facebook profit time series prediction model. So this is a peculiar time series prediction model. Why? Because it stands apart from the rest of the model statistical model which you can use for time series prediction like a uh, auto regressive model like the auto regressive with the moving average model and auto regressive with the integrated moving average and the seasonality with the auto regressive integrated moving average so these are the model we have discussed till now and this is what where you don't have to transform your data like you don't have to do the null checks you don't have to do the visual check to make your data stationary though you can achieve a perfect prediction or almost perfect prediction for the time series forecasting how because it is having a simple uh, ideology like it has like three or four factors you can tune up and it assumes the data could contain the trend the data could contain the seasonality and the seasonality can be of the four types like the yearly seasonality or the monthly seasonality or the daily seasonality or the weekly seasonality okay and um, the data can have like the a mix and match of the like two types of seasonality right so that also it can handle and it can handle the holiday effect like you know like we have a sales on like the black friday okay we have a sale on the christmas eve we have a sale in any other festival in any country right so this is called the holiday effect so that also it can handle so it can handle all the characteristics of the data so why we need to bother for transforming the data to make it stationary before applying any statistical model so that's why this is a special kind of time series technique let's discuss it in detail so first thing is like it is for a particular data analyst who does not know so much or like entry level data analyst or data scientist who is non expert in the data transformation or and this is so much customizable that though you can play with it and get a better better result with the yearly or monthly or weekly seasonality with the holiday effect and you does not need and he does not need to have any kind of stationarity in the data because it can handle all kind of trend and seasonality so where you need to apply where you can apply the profit so it has the hourly daily and weekly observation with at least a few month of history okay and it can have like multiple human scale seasonality like the day of the week or the time of the year so like this kind of regular intervals and it can handle the missing observation or the outlier as well okay and the last is like it can handle both the linear and the non linear trends so how this profit work so the profit has like certain parameter which you can set to true or false as i have discussed first is that what is your trend characteristic is it a linear trend or is it a is it a logistic trend okay the second thing is that do you have the yearly seasonal component or do you have a weekly seasonal component or do you have a list of holidays so these are the parameter you can set true or false so that you can customize your data prediction now we have used a very simple data set and we will give you first like 
how we are going to try the data transformation to get the stationarity of this data. And when we fail, how we can proceed with the profit and get an accurate prediction. So this data is readily available in this link. I will give it in description. And I just read this data. And it, this is the univariate data, okay? So this is like a primary condition to get any time series model for the future forecasting. So it has a monthly sales volume, okay? And then well, the you know the drills, like you need to um, change the month format to date time, and then you can go for the uh, day, month to be index column, and the other column will be variable on it. And then we will check the seasonal decompose, okay? So this is the index data set, and we can clearly see, so this has a trend part, and this has like, you know, seasonality also, and this is having some, uh, you know, residual component as well. So this is the trend, this is the seasonality, and this is the residual component. Now, we will check the stationarity first. So let's run the test stationarity. So this is the function we have explained in when we use the other time series forecasting model. So we'll use the same thing. This has like two components, like the visual component. So this is the visual component. It is like plotting the rolling mean and the rolling standard deviation and checking it whether it's constant or not. And the second part is like, the uh, null hypothesis testing. So there actually we'll check the p value. And if p value is like less than 0 0.05, then we will uh, reject the null hypothesis and accept the data is stationary. So let's check whether we can achieve both. So we'll check first the index data, the test stationarity. And we see that, no, it has some trend. The rolling average is not constant and it has some seasonality as well. I'll check the P value, okay? So this is the second test. This P value is not less than 0 0.05, right? So that is, it. we cannot reject the null hypothesis. The data is seasonal. So let's proceed. And you know, the second kind of transformation, the first transformation we'll do is a we will change this data to the log scale data. So let's make it a log scale data and check the stationarity as well. So yeah, the span of variation or the span of variance is like minimized and the rolling average is almost constant, but, and the rolling standard deviation is also constant. So we'll check the P value. P value is not like less than 0 0.05, right? So we cannot say the data is stationary. Okay, let's proceed. And we will check the, like doing the shift, like we'll subtract the moving average with a window of one year and we'll check the stationarity then as well. So now also you see this, you know, this uh, rolling average and rolling uh, this is the rolling standard deviation. Okay, this is like constant, but this is not less than 0 0.05. So we cannot say that this is stationarity according to these two checks. So now what to do? We cannot apply Arima. We cannot apply Sarimax. We cannot apply auto regressive models, right? So then you can do what you can do. You can readily, without doing any kind of indexing, without doing any kind of transformation, you can readily use the profit model to fit on this data. By default, you cannot, you need, no need to set any parameter, but this is one thing you need to follow, the column names. So, First, you need to install the profit. You can just simply use the pip install fd profit, and then you can import the uh, profit module or profit package. And then like on this data, 
you need to set the columns as ds and y so the y will be the count of car cells and the ds will be the date time field okay so this is the fixed field names we need to use so this is the only constraint you need to you can rename the columns and then you can proceed with the model to fit on this data so i just split the data in the train and test and 90 percent of the data is my train data and 10 percent of my data is the test data so that we can compare the prediction with my test data and then we will check like what will be the prediction before doing that there is another um, thing which is special for this you need you can use this function make future data frame of a period of 11 months and this is the monthly frequency you can create the future data set as well and then you can predict the future with this data so this make future data frame is the uh, function used to create the test data set where you can actually predict the future forecast now let's see what it predicts so this data and by the way the profit is uh, very much faster than the other time series forecasting model so this is like the future forecast you can see so where you can see these dots so these are the like you know um, the already exist the train data and the prediction the blue lines is the prediction and these dots are like you know the train data and this is the completely future data which you have generated by the make future data frame data set so we will compare this part with my test data so how you can compare so this is the data look like and what field you need to take so it has a like y hat lower y hat upper and it has a trend lower and trend upper and you need to use the y hat only so this is the field we will compare so this is the prediction field and this we will compare with the test data so let's proceed and we will like plot this data with the test data side by side and you can see that this is a very good prediction and it has a very good mae score as well so you see that we have used the data set as it is what we have read through the pandas data frame without doing any transformation we can readily use it just you need to change the column and then for the future you just need to create the future data frame and predict the y value or the y hat value for this data frame so this is only the uh, date time field okay or the ds field ds field is the um, more common jargon in uh, like the every profit so this is all about what we can actually uh, do as a quick start in fb profit um, uh, when we get time we will show you what all these uh, like different parameters you can set by default these parameters are all you know uh, set to its default like false and like the prediction is very good with the seasonality as well so it has some seasonality and it is predicting very well so thank you so much for watching this video please stay tuned uh, we will uh, showcase other time series forecasting uh, model as well in this series so please stay tuned thank you so much